The APIS A6S electric cargo bike has a load capacity of 450 pounds, and the bike weighs just 71 pounds and claims we can do 45 miles of range on a single charge. The 750 watt hub drive motor does 1300 watts peak, and the MSRP on this bike is $19.99, but it is currently on sale in the link below this video. But before you buy an electric cargo bike online, let's crack this thing open, take a closer look at it, then we'll take it out for a full review. Take out from side. That has got to be the easiest unboxing I've ever done. Oh, dude, that's it, man. This thing is like built. And it's got a center stand to help keep your load balanced when you load this thing up. Here's what the rear cargo rack looks like. Got some uh, accessories here. So the rear rack is welded onto the frame. The rack is the frame, giving it, you know, a high weight capacity. And back here, we can see there is an option, a tray here to add a second battery for dual batteries. And there are little uh, plastic pieces here to prevent anything from getting in the spokes as you ride. Looks like an area to add some passenger floorboards and several mounting points along the top here to mount different accessories. And we'll take a closer look at that hub motor here in a few. But first, the handlebars, these are like a folding style. Look, they're already attached. So as a dude that reviews a lot of bikes, I can really appreciate how, how assembled this thing arrives. These guys just come up here, then lock in place like a normal folding bike. And right away, I gotta say, this bike is reminding me very much so of a particular bike. You guys can name that bike, drop it in the comments. And up front here, we get plastic fenders, which are already installed, and front suspension. Front suspension has adjustable front suspension, nice. So you get multiple clicks. It's handy if you have a front rack on there. Which, speaking of front rack, this is where you would mount one with this style mount. So it's nice having adjustability on the front suspension when you have something on front. Changes like the ride characteristics. And front suspension's always good, you know, if you wanna buy a dozen eggs or something, put them on your front rack. But really, probably the most useful thing of front suspension just makes the ride nicer. Let's get in here, see what kind of battery they give us on the Apis. Looks like you get a little QR code here to activate the warranty. Oh, this uh, blue zip tie here really reminded me of something. Pop this battery out. Battery is branded Apis. Rechargeable lithium ion, but it better be rechargeable. 690 watt hours of energy, 48 volt, 14.4 amp hour. The interior cell is LG lithium ion battery. Nice. So LG and Samsung cells are good. Here's the charger style we'll get. And it's probably worth noting that this battery here, and if you put one back there, they would be different, not like interchangeable between the two. But this one does have the benefit that, you know, it's frame integrated, so it looks a little nicer, a little more modern, rather than like an external mounted one here. Wonder what they give us to charge it. Comes with pedals, instruction manual, and a charger. I, I actually like that they give you this warning label external. Good information to know, but not necessarily something I wanna leave on my frame. So the charger is, it's a two amp charger, so 14.4 amp hours divided by two amps. It'll be roughly seven hours to charge this thing from empty to full. Charge it while you build it. Check out the seat. So you get a quick release lever here. Hey, that's a thick seat post. And the actual seat. Decent. It's a pretty typical wide seat. Definitely looks like it'll be comfy. And let's take a look at the cockpit. Ooh, Tektro name brand brakes. Kind of surprised. Let's see the screen. Oh, the M5 display. Seen this before? Handlebar on this side. Actually, check this out. You guys got to see this. These handlebars. I've done this. I've seen this on another bike. Uh, these things are like adjustable in a very neat way. So check it out. This little adjustment thing here. It allows you to raise and lower them and rotate them and put them like exactly like where you want them so you can adjust it to like higher heights lower heights for different riders different angles on these bars and then whenever you're done press this down i'm gonna put them up a little higher because i'm tall so i'm put them like here lock that down yeah and then there's this little lever here if you want to adjust them you have to push this lever up and then lift this to move them again. It's a pretty, pretty cool little thing. So we get an ergonomic grip on the right, twist throttle on the right, seven speed shifter, Shimano gears, Tektro hydraulic brakes, nice feeling levers. We'll turn this display on in a few. In here we get, it looks like a light switch, turn signal switch, and a horn. Adjuster pedal assist here, and then ergonomic grip on the left. Tires have a street friendly tread, appear to be three inches wide. They are definitely 20 inches tall. CST big boat, good street tires, and yes, they are are three inches wide. We get a headlight up front. Here's what it looks like before you turn it on. And speaking of lights, there is a rear light hooked up to the battery. The seven gears are Shimano and a turn a derailleur. Got this little extra deal here to help keep your chain up away from the ground. The controller is externally mounted down here. You get water bottle holders right here. It's hard to get the zoom on that, but it says the controller is a 24 amp 
controller, plus or minus one amp. Alexa, what's 25 times 54? So that'll be about 1300 watts peak power on a full charge. Pulled from the batteries through the controller, sent to the motor. Here's the pedals that come on the bike. You get Tektro hydraulic brake calipers, as well as 180 millimeter rotors on Tektro rotors. All around, excellent brakes on this bike. Of course, you get the same plastic guards on the side. Probably wouldn't be doing much off-roading on this thing. You wouldn't want to bottom out here. Oh, and you get the same brakes up front. So let's pop the battery on there. And you gotta take it out of sleep mode by tapping this button here. That's always a nice feature to have, so it won't keep running your battery down if you store it for a long time. See what it looks like when we turn it on. Maybe you gotta hold it for the sleep mode thing. Button in here somewhere. To wake up, push the charge level indicator button on battery. There we go. Now we're woke up. Boom, there we go. So I've seen this display before. Pretty decent, very basic. You get your speed here front and center. Let's press a few buttons here. So trip voltage of the battery, which I always love to see that. So we're about half charged. 48 volts is about half. Current, so we can see how many amps are sending to the motor. Basically like a power level indicator. Awesome. Time, odometer, and that's all. So pretty useful metrics here. Uh, voltage and current are my favorite too. Then up here we get our uh, battery bar in terms of uh, just some bars. So it's telling us uh, basically 47 volts. It's reading a little bit over half charge I would actually say that's probably more like there I take two bars off that if this is my bike then of course the pedal assist you can do zero one two three four five of course and over here we get a light button light is I don't know how many lumens that is um, you know not the brightest light I've ever seen but it's all right looks like that from the front and it also turns on the rear light which I can see there are turn signals back here that turn on the right signal left signal no signal then grab the brake lever it lights up both so it's a brake light let me turn off the lights so it turns it off, but you still get your brake light when I pull the brake lever. So pretty cool. And now what everybody's been waiting for, the horn button, what's it sound like? <coughs> All right, decent. Not too crazy loud, not too crazy, you know, weenie. <coughs> I like it. I think the sound is coming from inside the light. I don't know though, don't quote me on that. And if you plug it in to start charging it, you can't turn it on, so you can't. If you think you can use an extension cord to charge this thing while you're riding it, don't even think about it. Not on this bike. Motor is really buried down in here, so it's hard to get to, but it does say 48 volts, 750 watts. And here is the uh, lettering stamped on the actual hub motor. Let's see what happens if we fire this thing up. Started on uh, pedal assist five here. Full throttle, ready, go. Hub motor's pretty quiet. So throttle will take us up to 20, as legally allowed by a class three electric bike. So we would need to apply the cadence sensor to take us beyond 20, in which we're gonna need to get in there and modify that top speed. So we do have the instruction manual here. We'll crack that out on our right. Tires call for a 30 PSI. Here's what a six foot five dude with a 34 inseam looks like on this bike on maximum saddle height and maximum handlebar height. Yeehaw! Please no more scuff marks. Step through frame makes it easy to get on and off. Seat will drop way down. And once you're down here, 34 inseam, handlebars like this. You can easily adjust these handlebars to go down, but they will go a little more forward. All right, let's take the Apis A6S out for a ride. On the website, you can get the cargo basket. It looks like it's a $150 checkout option right now on sale. See all that stuff in the link below. Today, this will be my cargo. Have some beach towels in there. Might stop by the beach, I'm not sure yet, but we are on a full charge. 54.4 volts. And of course, we'll check the range we get on this 14.4 amp hour, 48 volt battery. So let's go ahead and run it up the 20% grade and see what kind of torque this thing has. So I set this on current so we can see how much amps are being drawn from the battery. Uh, pedal assist five, twist throttle only, no pedaling. I weigh 200 pounds. What kind of power are we working with? So it's giving 23 amps of current and pulling us straight up the 20% grade. Absolutely no problem at all. Seems definitely sufficient for a cargo bike. Brakes are feeling good. They are the Tektro brakes. Ooh, don't smash them, please. Now, of course, if you do want to roll in with a, you know, a little bit of roll out and actually help pedal it, it would be even easier. Downshift some gears and you know, put in some of your own power. So if you're new here, you know, some bikes do have a pretty difficult time climbing that hill. 
Uh, this one had absolutely no problem at all. And that's exactly what you're gonna want on a cargo bike. I mean, we're gonna want torque for towing stuff, right? Welcome to another lovely day here in SoCal. Let's see if this thing, can you see the display through the polarized lenses? Oh yeah, perfectly fine, cool. So basic display, but it is very bright. I can see it out here on a bright day like today. So that's always nice. And right now I just have it on pedal assist five. I'm probably not gonna be doing a ton of pedaling today. Uh, but let's see how these pedal assist modes work. Short 20 inch nimble feeling, uh, three inch wide tires. So very playful, nimble, light feeling bike really for a cargo bike. Uh, it's, you know, kind of like a compactish style cargo bike, but I'd say, you know, you could definitely put a big rack on the back there and feels like this bike's definitely powerful enough to tow some stuff. Hand grips are not like bolted down, so they do just easily rotate. Now you could use some like hairspray or something to, you know, glue them down if that bothers you. So starting from a stop on Pedal Assist Zero, I recently had a subscriber ask, you know, how are these bikes to pedal with absolutely no power at all? Well, they kind of suck, honestly. Like you're just, this is like a 70 pound bike, I think. I am going into headwind too, but you know, I'm going like five miles an hour. Uh, you know, it's just kind of, you run out of battery, you run out of battery, but so Pedal Assist One, uh, let's see what it does here. So it's giving us three amps of current, just a solid steady three amps of current there, bringing us up to about eight miles an hour. And then once you get to the speed of nine miles an hour, it just reduces your current. So it gives you like a gentle amount of power on throttle on pedal assist one. This is the way I prefer uh, e-bikes to work. Just makes it like really easy to control your power. Kind of like a cruise control kind of thing. Although this bike does actually have cruise control. So hold the minus button for, I don't know. Oh, cruise, it says right there, nice. So we are on cruise controls, ladies and gentlemen. So this is wonderful, nine miles an hour. So pretty sweet if you wanna be, you know, you don't feel like pedaling, you always got cruise control. Oh, if you put it on pedal assist too, that actually uh, bumps up your speed. And then to uh, deactivate that cruise, you just tap a brake lever. Anyway, pedal assist too, let's see what that does now. So this will give us about nine amps of current. So what is nine times 48? And that'll take us up to about 16, 17 miles an hour, pretty gently. So. Uh, you know, this is probably what you want, you know, to conserve battery. So this one does come with the 14.4 amp hour battery pack, which is decent, but you can go for the D model or buy an extra battery and get, you know, dual batteries on this. So it does have that option there for you. And green light. So let's bump this thing on the pedal assist three now, going through the intersection here, giving us 13 amps of current now. This will take us up to about 18. And then one more bump here, bumps our current to about 17. Nimble feeling cargo bike when it's not loaded up. This will take us about 20. And I think this bike might be limited to 20 out of the box. We'll get in and change that. Pedal assist five. We'll slow it down for the churn just a bit here. Uh, let's see what the throttle will take us up to on pedal assist five. So 16 amps of current. I'm gonna ghost pedal here just a little bit and see if, okay, so it's, it's hard limiting us at 20 out of the box and brakes are confidence inspiring there as that curb was rolling up. Looks like somebody's having trouble with an electric vehicle here. So 1.2 miles into this ride, we're gonna unlock the top speed and take it out on this fast road. Hold the plus and minus button until this comes up and then press this till you get to eight. Oh, change this from 32 to 100 kilometers an hour. So 32 kilometers an hour is 20 miles an hour. 100 kilometers an hour is uh, 60 miles an hour. It does say top speed will be uh, limited by uh, load. Throw it up on the kickstand here to see what the theoretical max would be. Full throttle showing only 19 or 20 still under throttle. But if we do a little ghost pedaling, then it'll bring us up to 28 with no load on the motor. What if we get on the bike though? Full throttle, pedal assist five. Got a little oncoming traffic here. And you actually do need to be pedaling. So this is a buy the book, uh, class three electric bike after you unlock it. Get a little lane splitting in, why not? Oh yeah. 19, 21, 23, 26. And I can keep up with the pedaling, but it's going into a bit of a headwind. It's topping out at about 26. I could pedal a little harder in theory. 27. I mean, we're moving with traffic, really. <laughs> uh, man. Electric bicycles, man. It's the future. Let me cut across the lane here, too. Why not? A little bit of off roading. So, we do have that off front <laughs> suspension. Not a ton of travel on there, but you know, I think it's always better to have 
a little bit of front suspension rather than none. See if we can bottom it out. Oh yeah, you can bottom it out. <laughs> Let me firm it up actually. It has settings here. So on some of the recent cargo bikes I've reviewed, I found uh, the adjustable suspension on the front to be pretty beneficial for, you know, when you have something on the front. So, cause it really, you know, it's really weight dependent. Throttle will still max us out at 20, which will be good for battery life. As we can see here, this is only drawing uh, about seven amps of current here to maintain 20. One thing I'm noticing about this bike as I ride it is the hub motor is very quiet, very, very silent hub motor. Now this bike isn't really about speed racing or anything, but we'll do a little quick zero to 20 uh, speed acceleration here. So GPS in my left hand, full throttle already, go. Gives us 15, 20 amps of current, 10, 15, and 20, pretty much, 20. So it kind of starts reducing your current when you get up there. So pretty solid uh, accelerator, you know, not thrilling, but sufficient. Brake levers on this are nice. Uh, Tektro brake levers. I like these ones and the Zoom brake levers for budget bikes. 180 millimeter rotors is good. So in general, uh, compared to some of the other cargo bikes I've recently reviewed, this one just feels a little more nimble. Maybe because there's not much on it. Nice bike, bro. Hey, how, you doing, <laughs> how you doing, man? Been a game changer. Sometimes you guys ask what I do with my old bikes. That was one of them right here. He is thoroughly enjoying his experience, as you can hear from the conversation. He said he got some pegs for the moped style e-bike he has, taking a little one on the back. So that's definitely one nice thing about e-bikes in general, whether it be a cargo bike or not, but especially these cargo bikes on, they're kind of more designed for passengers. Like if you're riding a bike that's not an electric bike, trying to tow around a passenger, good luck with that, man. Like carrying weight on a bicycle is a hard task to do unless you have you know a strong motor and battery to to do the work for you to some degree but you know you can always do a little exercise on your own too cruise control feature is nice right now i just 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 chilling here dude whether it be a thumb throttle or a twist throttle they both get kind of annoying to hold down if you, if you don't intend on pedaling and a beautiful day at the beach here let's see how it'll do in the sand oh my goodness actually way way more better than i was expecting but definitely not you know not not the kind of bike to be riding on sand but i gotta get all the way back there dang it <laughs> another thing i'm noticing about this bike as i'm on it oh I'll just stay up right there i'm so deep in the sand but uh the cockpit it's just kind of like a little bit more uh squished to get well obviously you can adjust that but this bike would be a good uh, option for a cargo bike for a smaller individual who wants to bring the handlebars in Granted, they will be like raised up a bit. Oh yeah, get all that sand up in there. Man, I wish I had a camera on this dude just like about ran into me head on with a scooter. Tourists out here in the wrong lane, lost control. But I do want to emphasize uh, just how quiet this hub drive motor is. This has got to be like one of the more quiet hub drive electric bikes that I've, I've reviewed probably ever that I can think of. It is like as silent as a gearless hub drive motor almost what's happening over here so unlike some of the bigger cargo bikes around here i feel comfortable just whipping around here and people probably would not want a full-size cargo bike riding through there like that cargo bike look at the size of that thing dang that's gotta be an expensive one man bosch mid-drive so as i'm cruising on this thing literally cruising on cruise control i'm realizing this thing handles very much like a folding electric bike and the reason for that is is this whole like handlebar stem it's you know collapsible and it is like a folding e-bike in that regard now the frame does not fold in half but that doesn't matter it still feels <laughs> It still feels exactly like a folding e-bike to me sitting up here. I guess I guess it has like a little bit less of like a robust uh, a bicycle, cargo bicycle feel to the uh, handlebars. But let's go ahead and uh, throw it on pedal assist five here, full throttle this and see if we can, uh, how it does on this hill. So uh, 11 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, giving us about 19 amps of current. And <laughs> so pretty strong hill climber this thing's got good torque as i mentioned the hub motor is very silent but also there's like absolutely no squeaking from the brakes and it's just like a very silent bike in general whip around and silent little ninja stealth uh cargo bike so let's see what kind of pedal assist lag there is here we'll crank it up to five to exaggerate it uh not pedaling pedaling and it kicks on pretty strong not much of a ramp up there at all on pedal assist 5 gets us 
cooking pretty quickly. Bring it back down a bit here. Flip that over to the current mode. Not pedaling, pedaling and power so about uh just under a second of lag i would say totally acceptable and once you're cruising at a higher speed not pedaling now pedaling uh same lag so i'd say right about a second so not the quickest responding cadence sensor but also not slow by any means you might be able to change that stuff in the menu and man it is feeling absolutely perfect out here today warm sunshine cool breeze i don't know if you guys can hear that but man Beautiful summer day. Now, we're gonna run it up that hill. You know, California incline, 85 foot climb, 12% grade. We'll see what she can do. Real quick, we are 8.5 miles into this ride, uh, 45 minutes showing 50.5 volts on the uh, battery at rest. So what's that, about 70% roughly? And uh, the, the bar readout still says full charge, so not super useful on there. And we'll do full throttle here. Let's see what kind of voltage sag we start to get. I had to let off. But even letting off, uh, having, you know, like uh, a jerky performance here, this thing's a strong hill climber. Yet again, going around the loop-de-loop. -loop. Voltage sagging down to 47 volts. That's just what happens with all electric vehicles. Under load, they, the voltage dips. And coming around the corner here, uh, full throttle. We are at 10 miles an hour on the California incline. Voltage sag 47 and current draw is 20 amps. 21 amps, 22 amps. So 22 times about 48, whatever that comes out is our watt as we're running, hitting uh, 18 miles an hour and accelerating. Pretty decent performance. We're gonna blow past the uh, acoustics. Oh, actually that was a electric bike. I saw the hub motor on there. So they are chilling. 19 miles an hour, pretty normal performance for a 750 watt nominal hub motor. And again, a very, very quiet bike. But yeah, we were just down there on the bike path. As you already know, what a absolutely stunning day out here in Southern California. What do you like if you enjoy this stuff? Also, let me know if you guys want to see a little more variety in my rides. I know some people like that I like repeat the same thing over and over so you can compare bike to bike. But I don't know. Do you guys want to see some new stuff or new route? Let me know. Going downhill would be our best chance to see top speed on this bike. You have to let off the throttle and do a little ghost pedaling for the motor to help you. I'm not putting in any sort of actual pedal power. Like I couldn't even keep up with the pedaling right now safely, I don't feel. So we have a headwind and motor is helping us. And hopefully the brakes work, 27.5. <laughs> So brakes are uh, really good on this bike. Like I said, you know, Tektro hydraulic disc brakes and then these CST big boat tires. They are three inches wide. A lot of times the braking force of your tire is limited. It's limited by the tire, not so much as the uh, caliper grabbing the rotor. But these uh, Tektro hydraulic disc brakes feel really nice because they're hydraulic. And then since they're 180 millimeter rotors, they grab hard and then the tires, they're wide. They stick to the ground to really complete the power transfer of the braking power to the ground and ultimately convert all of that kinetic energy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, this is why you gotta have the camera on all the time. Like I was saying, and ultimately convert that kinetic energy into heat. That's what brakes do. Well, science for you, how about that? What do we got going on here? A dangerous situation, that's what. I mean, usually with a tailwind, there's like no breeze right now. Usually, listen. This motor is like particularly quiet and the tires are quiet too. We'll go ahead and give them a quick official test here from 20 miles per hour and brake. Oh yeah, really good brakes. Bro, I've totally been forgetting to use my turn signals. So quick little final thoughts on the Apis A6S. It's a pretty cool little cargo bike. I really don't see anything wrong with it. I like that it has the front suspension. I like that it's a very quiet motor. The brakes are quiet, just a quiet, pretty powerful bike. I like that the seat comes up to, you know, so I can get the proper leg extension on this thing if I want to pedal it. But I also love that it has the cruise control feature. So I can just literally cruise control when I don't feel like pedaling. I think that the handlebars, the collapsing foldable style definitely gives it, you know, kind of like that folding bike style handling. And I like that it has the option to run two batteries. You don't have to run two batteries, but you can double your range if you want to. So if you like what you're seeing here, you can click the link below, check the current price. I think it's 1600 bucks right now, normally $2,000, or it would be about 300 bucks more if you want the dual battery version. But right now we're sitting at 48.9 volts. We'll head on home, see what kind of final range we get out of this battery. Here's an example of an e-bike that's not so quiet. 
I've got to say that front suspension really does make a pretty big difference out here cruising on the street. Just the little imperfections in the road, man. It really, really makes it a lot easier on your arms. All right, dude, just getting back in the neighborhood here. 17 and a half miles, pretty much hour and a half of ride time uh, showing about, well, let's see. It's showing half bars under, oh, I'm on a uh, good, <laughs> Uh, suspension saved me there a little bit. Let's turn this cruise control off and battery is showing about 50%. 47.4 volts, so just a little bit under half uh, with pretty much uh, no pedaling really today. Just been cruising and using throttle. I weigh 200 pounds for about 17 miles. So, I mean, if that's how you ride it, you'll probably get about, you know, 35, 40 miles if you pedal a little bit. Just, you know, it depends. Load it up with some cargo, you might get a little less. Go a little bit slower, help it a little, you might get a little more. Anyway, that's my results. If you want to grab one of these bikes, click the link down below. Buy through that link down there. It would help support this channel and also give you the best price. However, if this is not the kind of bike you're looking for, you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time.